it's hard to believe that this could happen so easily, but it can. And a lot of it has to do with FERC. And we need to understand what FERC is. As the Federal you know, Energy Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, you know, we view them as a regulatory agency. But in this context, they're an approval agency. They are working with the oil companies and gas companies to seek approval. So when we submit comments to them, they're not our friend. You know, they're looking to help the oil companies or gas companies. So understanding their regulations and the game they need to play is really important in responding to them. And some of the other issues we have, you know, there's a lot against them. This was an email I got from the New Jersey Alliance for Action. And it's the classic job person requirement issue that we're fighting against. And you can see, look, millions of dollars in new capital projects. But the issue really is political. And this came in the same day I got that first email. It went to billions of dollars in one day. <laughs> this is one of our biggest issues. <laughs> And Jerry Jones is an oil man. But all kidding aside, the ability to really make change with the regulations that we have in place comes from the top. The staff understands what the problems are with this process, but it's still a top-down process. It can be very easy on how to better site and manage and build these, these gas lines. Because the regulations are in place, but it's how we implement those regulations. So, one of the key things with the Natural Gas Act and with FERC is preemption. And that preempts, allows them to preempt all local and state ordinances. It does not allow them to preempt federal law. So, Going to skip down. When we have, New Jersey has the ability to issue a 401 water quality certification. And 401 is a section of the Clean Water Act. And what that section does is it essentially is the state's ability to say like, yes, this project complies with all elements of the Clean Water Act. So we will grant them certification to allow that project to proceed. If New Jersey says, we don't like how this is proceeding, we're not going to give you a water quality certificate. The project can't happen. Or the project takes on a different form. That's what I mean, that there's power in New Jersey, but it has to start up high. In reading this, this PowerPoint presentation that uh, Carolyn Elephant did, this slide was really what, what got me. Find the weak spot. And in this process, the weak spot is the federal regulation. I mean, weak spot for the gas companies. And we're, we have the, we're in the process of reviewing the line that's going through Princeton. And, and to be blunt, there's a thousand pages of words on the document they submitted to the state for their permits. And it really is a load of crap. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry I used the word, but it's appropriate. And it is, there's sections in it that are worse than like an eighth grader can do in a high school or an eighth grade report. I mean, it's just really poorly done. But, like Jeff brought up NEPA, and, and the guidance or, or the key to NEPA is that there should be reasonable alternatives to avoid and minimize adverse effects. And when I saw this line, where it was located, I was like, what are you, crazy? it's going to run through half the, the anti-degradation streams in the state. But, it's like Jeff mentioned, it's an easy route. There's not a lot of development, mainly open space, so it's cost effective. But, there are regulations in place that should guide them to a better, better location. But if you have a chance to read any of the previous EAs, you'll understand that there's an arrogance provided by FERC with these gas companies that seems to just empower them to put these lines wherever they want. 
Now these are the federal acts that all have a nexus to our project. The Endangered Species Act, Wild and Scenic River Act, National Historic Preservation Act. Someone mentioned that there's a historic site. And the thing with federal, the federal process with permits, so if I need a wetland permit, I can't conflict with any of those other acts. So if I need just a minor road crossing, but there's a historic site, I'm not, I just can't get that permit. So we have to understand the value and importance of all these acts. Executive orders are also important. And there's something we don't hear about as often, but they're very important. And by the way, FERC is the only agency that's exempt from the wetlands and floodplain uh, executive orders. But the whole key to executive orders is the government, those agencies doing these projects, are supposed to show leadership in protecting the environment. So that's why it's interesting that FERC doesn't have to follow the wetland and floodplain executive orders. But there are other ones they have to follow. I'm gonna go back one. The water quality standards, that's the basis in regulation for the anti-degradation streams, your category one streams that are all over this part of the state and, and Pennsylvania. 404, they're gonna need an individual permit for this. They need to look at alternatives. And I know we're seeking to stop the project, but what you're going to see with their application is they have a very weak alternative analysis and they have virtually no alternative analysis to minimize impacts when they're crossing these anti-degradation streams. They have a recipe, it's a general recipe for all these projects, and they're pretty much the same across the board. Water quality standards, that's what I said, that's our anti-degradation stream. Compliance with that standard is extremely important. And it's like Maya showed, with all those impacts to the watershed, very difficult to satisfy that regulation. And I mentioned before the water quality certification, which is how the state essentially looks at all those impacts and should view them comprehensively to determine whether it satisfies New Jersey's requirement to mandate or to regulate the Clean Water Act. So, New Jersey has their Freshwater Wetlands Protection Act, but New Jersey only one of two states that assume Section 404 jurisdiction. So New Jersey's Freshwater Wetland Act is the federal nexus. The Clean Water Act, you know, New Jersey's also kind of woven in between other rules. The Flood Hazard uh, Control Act, there's a 300 foot buffer, a riparian buffer, mandated on our anti-degradation streams. What I've seen with the FERC process is they tend to overlook that because it doesn't look outwardly like a federal rule. But that's how New Jersey manages and maintains the quality of our water quality standards for special protection waters. So conflicts with the riparian zones end up having a federal nexus and are important. So anti-degradation streams. This is the definition. This is why it's important, especially with my opinion. Measurable changes in water quality. Now you saw those big swaths of clearing through the forest, and, and Maya mentioned the increase in runoff, the, the loss of cover. So what we're going to see is an increase in runoff, warmer water, all measurable impacts. That's why it so amazed me that they proposed to run this route through this part of New Jersey, because there's so many anti-degradation streams, and they're all forested. So the difference between pre and post is going to be great. The other part of it, aesthetic value, ecological integrity, they're all important concepts with regard to this pipeline and can be very helpful in the basis for your comments. So, oh, this, this is what Williams said in the Princeton Pipeline Project that, that's before DEP now that during construction, clearing, and grading of vegetative cover, they're going to increase erosion along stream banks. 
Alteration of natural drainage or compaction of soils by heavy equipment during construction may accelerate erosion. Just same comment. It was in your report where a couple paragraphs later they're saying they, they satisfy the anti degradation standards. And so forth. The Flood Hazard Control Act in New Jersey recommends strongly to use directional drilling under all streams. In their compliance statement, this section wasn't even mentioned. Details, very important. Talked about before water quality standards. It helped deny a pipeline years ago in Long Island, purely based on water quality standards. So can it happen? Yeah, absolutely. And it was twice supported in court after the denial. It's a very powerful tool that is in the right hands. This is um, another line that, uh, you know, again, a moment of mind is pictures of, you know, they're actually a very clear picture on how well their erosion sediment control measures work. The inherent issue with their whole pipeline is that mitigation solves all their problems. If they can mitigate any impact, just based on a photograph like that, some of the other, other photographs you saw from Maya, it, it's, it, they made a pretty good record that they aren't capable. Uh, this is just some examples of other proof that they failed to satisfy those requirements. They've been fined routinely on many of the projects. And I, I encourage you for this Wisconsin one, look at the photographs. It's unbelievable the damage they did to wellings. And they were fined a million dollars. The sad thing about this process is a million dollar fine after the fact, <clears throat> isn't that meaningful? You know, it's just the cost of doing business for those companies, not for us. Um, just more fines. So we were actually involved working with Highland Lake and it was a uh, stream cut and then a heavy rain and it blew everything out. So nature isn't necessarily helpful, but we can't control it. A rainstorm at the wrong time can create a disaster. This is one that's important for this area. There is an executive order dealing with migratory birds. In the, the Princeton line, or the Skillman loop they call it, <clears throat> it was a paragraph that was poorly conceived and based on very old documentation that showed how they satisfied this executive order. But this is going to be a new line. This is all new fragmentation. That executive order has some powerful language in it. It's worth looking at, and especially down here where it says, and significant bird sites that occur on land. Again, executive orders are designed that the agency in charge is supposed to show leadership, not to take advantage of our ignorance, but to show leadership. Oh, and this is a mitigation site, not far from here, just outside of Clinton and one of the recently done lines. So this is in one of those temporarily disturbed areas. Dead. Within two years. No evidence that they're coming back right away, but the reforestation plan, not so good. other things that we found with the Princeton line is watch carefully. The stream shown in that photograph wasn't delineated. There's a little open area right next to it to the right. That's, that's the existing line. So they just missed that. It's not subtle. I think anyone here would say that's a stream. No, it didn't show up. Um, but this is their first wetland delineation. You can see the little area right here. That's, that's the extent of what they said New Jersey regulated. And after Princeton tortured them a little bit, that's what they ended up with. Very different. And their comment was they didn't have access to the property. But then all the homeowners clearly told FERC that we all are granted access. But it was a way to minimize impacts. 
So the first application shows way less impact than what they're going to show in their application. So we do have the ability through the regulations in place to make a powerful statement, FERC, and to the pennies. But again, the issue, the biggest issue we have is still the government. We have to convince the government that this is a bad thing. And it starts at the top with this administration. The staff gets it. You can talk to the staff and they'll be very clear. They understand what the impacts are, but they have to be empowered to actually follow their regulations. Thank you.